It's a bright afternoon here, having these great gentlemen um, here to talk about raising the standards of politics in Nigeria and changing the narrative that politicians are people that are not, never do well. I have with me here great professionals. I start with uh, Mr. Abiola was you, and uh, that's Mr. Ademolo Diego, and that's Mr. Olayemi. Yes, these are young professionals that um, believe the situation prevalent in the country is not in respect of the political space, it's not what it should be. So we'll quickly go into some questions and see and fill their thoughts on some very pertinent issues. I would like to start with Mr. Abiola Taiwo. Mr. Abiola Taiwo, based on the provisions of Section 7 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which provides that for the creation of local governments, and also Section 162 of the same constitution, it provides for the sharing of public revenue. Would you, in all honesty, say there is autonomy based on the provisions of this constitution, sir? <coughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm in the First, I want to say that on paper, the paper constitutionally speaks to autonomy of local government. On paper, local government exists autonomous, autonomous, autonomous of state. As it is today, we have 774 local government in Nigeria. And supposed to function on their own, on either without interruption or undue interference by the hosting state. Each state has their different numbers of local government. Some also have local community development area, which we look at all the, 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 the essence is to reach out to the grassroots and let the democracy be felt at the grassroots. Back to the question, on paper, like I mentioned, it appears to be autonomous. But if you look at what we have today in practical terms, I don't believe there's any autonomy on the side of the government. They are, by and large, they appear more like an agent attached to the state, which shouldn't be as defined in the Constitution. Thank you very much, Mr. Abela. Mr. Abiyabo, you are vast in Obo State politics. Albeit we are not narrowing down any discussion to any state or local government in particular. Do you agree with Mr. Abiola on this, Abiola Taiwo, on, on, on the issue that autonomy only exists on paper and not in practice? from your experience. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Fred Matis. Yes, I, I share similar sentiments. I strongly believe also that um, local government autonomy only um, appears to exist on paper, but not in reality. Um, if you go around Nigeria today, you will find out how that um, the primary responsibilities of local government have practically been taken over by the states. One of them is um, basic education, which is uh, the primary school that we talk about. Primary health. If you go around states all over Nigeria, state government are the ones building primary health centers. State government are the ones paying primary school teachers. They are the ones building primary. So you'll see that basically the, the the primary function of local government has been taken over by state government. Can we have possible autonomy exist for, for, for local government? No, because their function has practically been taken over by the state government. So we therefore go 
don't say that there's any autonomy for Canary uh, for local government in Nigeria. Would well, you not see that as coming from the constitution which in most paragraphs makes the states make the local government look like a baby in the hands of the states that has to be fed by the state? I'll put it like this. The same imp impression we have is that, I'll just use the example I cited that local government paying primary school teachers, uh, sorry, state government paying primary school teachers. Is the federal government helping state government to pay secondary school teachers? No. Even in as much as we still see that state government still need to run to Abuja at the end of the month for allocation. There are also babies in the hands of the federal government. But the federal government are not helping them to pay secondary school teachers. So why should the local government and uh, state government be helping primary school, uh, state government uh, local government to pay primary school teachers? That is still a is, is an abnormal as far as I'm concerned. Thank you very much. Mr. Olayemi, um, you are well known to be an activist. <laughs> so I do not expect you to deviate from their line of thought, but I don't want to preempt anything. I want to believe you may have a different opinion. But I want to ask specifically the Constitution says in um, section one, subsection two, that the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall not be governed, nor shall any person or group of persons take control of the government of Nigeria or any part thereof. Or any part thereof is my concern now as it relates to local governments and state governments, except in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. Now, we have situations where some governors, in their own wisdom, dissolve local government councils and replace them with a caretaker committee picked by them. What do you see to this? Do you see this as still because the constitution allows that the local government is being fed and being directed by the state. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marito. I think um, we need to be very particular about this. Uh, about this. The recent pronouncement of the Supreme Court on the solution of the local government in the Supreme Court is very, very clear. It is totally illegal. It's an abnormal act to the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the, the interpretation of the Supreme Court is very, very clear on that. So I don't think we need to, I think going forward, we need to state categorically that it is abnormal, it is, it is an aberration of our laws, and it should never be encouraged you know, going further. So I said that, the, the constitution is very, very clear. The, the only power arbitrated to the to the state to, to the to the state is to the state house of assembly to to make to make laws that helps the local government to generate more revenues, not necessarily to dissolve the local government administration that is duly elected by the people. So I think I think I I want to submit that uh, we, need to, we need to make it clear. To, to the governors uh, that it, it can be done. Thank you. All right. It can be done. I agree. It shouldn't be done. It shouldn't be done. But it's been done. Now, recently, um, just about a couple of weeks back, some local government chairman was suspended by the House of Assembly. I'm talking strictly on the position of law now. Do you think it is right or you believe on moral grounds that shouldn't be? Constitutionally, it is it's an aberration. It is, it is practical. 
practically illegal because we already have a pronouncement from the Supreme Court that you cannot, as a state government, suspend or, di or, 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 or dissolve. But this came from the House of Assembly, which is empowered to make laws for the good governance of the state. The Constitution is explicitly clear. There is no provisions within the Constitution that state that the state assembly should suspend uh, the local government challenge. But then if you can interpret making laws for the good governance of a state, um, you can then infer that it also encompasses discipline. Well, the suspended chairman, in my own wisdom, need to, need, need, need to approach the court to, to interpret this, that, that very section of the Constitution, to ask the court or pray the court to, 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 to explain or interpret that provision, so whether, this, whether the State Assembly you know, have the power to, for, for such suspension. Very good. Now, Mr. Duyabo, what uh, Mr. Laiyami just said brought, has just brought an idea of a very good question. He said the chairman ought to approach the courts for interpretation of the provision of the law as it affects them by their suspension. Do you think from the political structure we have prevented, the chairman can have that political will to approach the court against a structure that is obviously their party and their leaders. Do you think they can break from that? Thank you. Um, that chain? <laughs> I will um, take it from this um, background. Do you know in this country, um, states like Edo, Imo, Rivers, Odo, truncated and elected states um, local go sorry local government chairman at will. They did that and nothing happened. You know that a state like Anambra, eight years, no single local government election and nothing happened. Run the local government with sole administrators for eight years and nobody contested it. Why? Because there is still so much power allocated to governors to the point that they practically hold on to the structures of the entire political um, configuration of the state to the point that nobody is ready to challenge them because of party loyalty. And that is where the will, that's the word, party loyalty, that is where the will for this chairman that has been suspended to a approach the court for a redress will not happen because there is no will. The party loyalty is supreme. If the party has said this is what they, they, they are going by, because if you go and look at those who have been suspended, every single one of them are all from the same party. So it is more, it is beyond the issue of um, these people are doing that, these people are not doing well, that is why they are suspended. Party concern is also put into consideration. However, I tell you, this practice is an assault to the principle of grassroots participation in democracy. Thank you very much, Mr. Diabo. Um, Mr. Adiola Taiwo, this issue of party loyalty as against freedom of, uh, as against the constitutional safeguard, which comprises so many issues like freedom of thought, freedom of association, freedom, and even your right to sue when you feel aggrieved. Do you think, I'm asking again, I asked you to Mr. B about that, one or two people can break from this chain of say, oh, yes, it's my party. Because from, from the, 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 the constitution of, some, of, of even some of the parties, 
which are very much like uh, almost alike. All the parties have constitutions that are almost alike from some provisions in their in their own constitutions. They have internal mechanism to resolve issues and they have provisions that if you cannot get justice within the party, you cannot approach the court. But we find that in most cases, injustice is meted out on certain individuals within the party and they just keep quiet. Do you think we should start thinking now of making the constitution supreme as it ought to be to the constitution of parties? Do you think we can get to that. Thank you so, very much. Uh, I need to say that, regardless of the is it 20 years of public democracy, or yes. yes. Now we are still a growing democracy. Quite a lot of work still needs to be done in ensuring and entrenching this party structure. Internal working system. You find there are quite a lot of circulated uh, platform ch channel for arbitration, conflict management, because in as much two candidates that are always needed for conflict. I may not be a politician to vote, but at the same time, we are concerned for good governance and moving the country forward. It is clearly stated in many of the party constitutions I mentioned, when there is conflict, the step to take. More often than none, I've seen that to be more of theoretical or academic work because whatever you like, the Structure is still there. I don't know if I'm tempted to use this word of Baba Shokwe. Mm -hmm. People believe that it is not limited to any party. All parties have party leadership. We first get it wrong in where we allow executive, especially the state office holder, to hold and hijack the structure of the party. Power corrupts, I believe, to that they say. And now absolute you have absolute, absolute power. power. Oh, absolutely. That means you are just like Alpha and Omega. So, and at the same time, you also re uh, remember in cases, I don't want to go into mention of any party or any state in particular, but I mean, you remember that some are asked to withdraw their cases in court, that it's, it's legal to take a party to court. Some are told that really that. We cannot listen to you in as much as you have a case against us in court. Probably, I'm sure that those people that have been frustrated have been trying to explore the internal mechanism. Because I want to report, basically, over, overbearing on, on me performing is the one that even determines the, the, the structure of the party. So I believe as we are growing, more agitation, agitation in the right part, mind you asking for good governance, things will be done rightly. If you get to a point where a member of political party A will vote enough and challenge the party in court on some issues like that, we've seen more often than it is when individual uh, uh, position is threatened, individual thing is threatened that people tend to approach the court. I want a situation where people that are not necessarily beneficial Interested party that they, I cannot open my eyes and see the local government in my area being suspended overnight illegally. Let me approach the court to, to, to interpret. Because, like we said, it would be difficult for us to expect some chairman to dare the consequences unless most of the time uh, Nigeria have not realized that court is there to bring out peace and resolution. We still view that we cannot come back from court and still remain friends. So when you want to address your situation, you want to approach the court, as soon as we are approaching the court, I mean, before the, the, the domestic issue that you cannot resolve, they just call police to come and just play, maintain peace. After the police, it can not come back, but we rather fight there 
to even uh, what's more that means and people are approach the government agency that that know that because a lawyer, the judge, the judicial system, they have the perfect way of solving this problem. The constitution has read it out. I'm not able to interpret it fairly as expected. Now we have a, 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 I mean, like now the court, the, the court that was just, the case that just decided in New York State now. Something is now is a case study and a reference in point for another, uh, another governor to know that this, this step is taken. This is already uh, going against the law. So until when we get to that situation where I be able to approach court to seek redress on behalf of another party being, I mean, another person, right, being, 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 being trapped on. And without being seen as enemy. And I can also go and approach the court on myself, on my right being trampled upon. And I've not seen that. So we have to first address that situation in Nigeria. We can return back from court and still be friends. Thank you very much, Mr. Taiwo. We can return from courts and still remain friends where a lot of things happen in courts that I know about that will not make you remain friends. Now, um, we are talking of paradigm shift. I want to know your thoughts. I will start from you, sir, Mr. Okay. Taiwo, on the very recent happening in Nigeria no, known as NSAS. Do you think NSAS in any way has an impact on the political space now, considering happenings around as against these forthcoming local government elections. I'm narrowing down to Lagos State now. Do you think any lesson was learned from answers? Uh, actually, that's a banana for me. <laughs> because NSAS is a very, very, very serious issue. Like now, if you say a, the B side will feel otherwise, feel offended. No, I wanted to now. say your mind. Now, the intention, the intention, the trigger, and some of the initial demand are totally valid. Okay. And it has created awareness in the mind of an average individual. We have some rights and we can enforce our rights. If we don't they allow us to enforce it legitimately, we can now go out in another way. Because so, sometimes the protests come, protests and the not come when people are able to listen and not listen as expected. So that is the, the goal I can see. First, first take back the positive side of the answers. We have got a lot of negatives out in the Played out eventual and the obvious situation that ended the answers. I mean, it affected all of us so negatively, and we are yet to recover as a country, as individual, and many, many businesses are affected. So that was the area of the sensitive part of it. But creating awareness now, despite the fact that you are a policeman, your role is for my safety. You should not threaten my existence. But at the same time, I also need to respect you, knowing fully well that you are like me, committing yourself day and night to my safety. So there must be mutual respect and symbiotic leadership between all of us. But as regards the upcoming election, what I have not seen till now, I have not seen the so-called Sorosuke generation articulating themselves passionately and ready to take charge of the governance. Could, could you say that because of finance, you know, politics in Nigeria could be expensive? It is always easy to identify all the reasons why things cannot be done. Hmm. But first, what step am I taking to do things in the right way? I've not seen so much of uh, association of like minds mm. coming together
together in, 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 the, in the thousands as we saw at the Lake Itoge the other time. This election that, that we are warming up, and I'm still saying that we are still seeing the same old faces. By and large, they have, have a louder voice. How was NSAS financed and managed? Now we are talking about IDEC is, is about starting registration. How many of our youth will be willing to know that the first position, the first step to take is to have a voter's card? So I uh, will not only say it is because of finance alone. You know, the mind must be willing to do it. To do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Odriyabo, answers has come and gone. In this country today, the security situation is well known to everyone. And it's really becoming alarming by the day. Do you foresee another round of answers? Um, um, well, I wouldn't say directly that another form of answers. Protests will always come and go. Come and go. Come and go. Uh, but I think it would uh, be better managed. Answers taught us a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons. Um, and I think both governments, activists, everybody concerned, we have all learned one or two things in handling such situation next time it comes up. Um, if at all, such will happen again. We are all going to be taking responsibility. During the first time, we were not taking responsibility. Okay, we left it to the youth. We left it to them. Exactly. And that was where uncoordinated. And that was where the problem started from. The first 10 days, almost everybody, in fact, governors joined them in even protesting in showing solidarity to what they were clamoring for. But we, have, we, we, we let it go on, we let it go on, uncoordinated. And um, at a point, I think um, um, probably the whole team got beyond the management of those who said, because each time they keep saying, we don't have leaders, we don't have leaders, we don't have everybody is the leader. So they, they turned into so everybody was <laughs> was 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 was, was uh, probably let's say everybody was just in charge, and when you have everybody in charge, you <laughs> can't succeed. You can, yes, you, you can't say everybody is in charge. I've never seen anywhere where everybody, no organization, no entity, no formation, no nothing that everybody is in charge. Mm. Because when everybody is in charge, there's nobody to hold responsible. But then with this. Terrorism, that's the way I want to put it. That's right, it has, it has moved from ads men, farmers clashes to outright kidnapping, um, killing, all sorts of uh, nefarious activities. Don't you think it could get to a boiling point whereby people will say, enough? Absolutely. In fact, I think it's already getting to that point already. Um, it's rather unfortunate where we find ourselves as a nation today. Um, you can't sleep with both eyes closed. Um, you, you hear um, maybe a tire burst <laughs> the sound next and then you, you jump out of bed. You, you, probably, you <laughs> jump out of your skin. And then because the security situation presently is um, worrisome. Mm -hmm. Now, we were initially we used to think it is only the north that was not safe. Now, north, east, south, west, central, nowhere seem to be safe anymore. And um, there is no way this will continue and people will not. We, people have started talking already. A particular senator got up at the floor of the National Assembly and he, 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 he called out the president directly. He called out the president. We have had 
House of Assembly members also calling out the president. We have had people who belong to the, state, the same party with the president calling out the president. We have had people call out that the president should declare a state of emergency on security. It is, it is a situation that is worrisome, and that's why people are calling out. But this, they, I always tell people, you cannot continue to drop the ball around the desk of the president. What are governors doing? They all collect what we call security votes every year. You can't call the president when the president cannot be responsible for security. What are governors doing? Some governors, yes, are proactive. They, they've um, set up vigilantes, they've set up this and that in their own state to just make sure they are fighting. But some governors are only going to Abuja to take pictures with the president. They, they, they sit with their hands folded between their hands, doing nothing. So we cannot only drop the ball on, on, the, on the desk of the president, Mr. President. No. Governors also need to take, I always tell you, security. Security is grassroots. Well, security is grassroots. Thank you, Mr. Diego. Now, Mr. Lai, I mean, security is grassroots, but we know that we have a central police um, institution which falls under the purview of the president. And we have also seen over time that political interests go into the issue of security. Would you advocate for state police? First and foremost, I quickly want to touch on um, the issue of the NSAS. Um, I think we, we, we are forgetting something. The, the organizers of the NSAS protest are very, very deliberate in decentralizing the leadership of the NSAS so it's not as if it is by circumstance that they, they are claiming they don't have leaders. I think it is a deliberate attempt because they don't want the federal government to, to be able to, to make a point yes. with their ranks by saying, okay, this is their leader, let's Maybe pick him up. You know, and, or so or make him compromise. Or make him compromise. That, that as, as it may, uh, the only reason why it is difficult for, for the youth to, to begin to articulate their, their interest in probably the, this upcoming election is, is the major, there are many reasons. First and foremost, immediately after, after the protest was, uh, you know, went down, uh, many of them were picked up, and few of them, their passports were seized. So that is a form of intimidation one way or the other. Then the most ridiculous thing you know, and I did immediately after was to disregister some parties, which happens to have youth party among them. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they were still in court up to maybe last month. You know, youth party in particular were in court up to last month. You know, they, they took I to court to say no, they cannot deregister us. We've only they've only featured in election once, and they should be given chance to to feature in upcoming elections. So they, they even made attempt to feature in the Edelbus election, which they didn't allow them because they've been deregistered de already. And the um, Supreme Court came, came out with judgment that, okay, INEC has the right to deregister de those parties. So one way or the other, even if the youth, are, are, somehow they are, they are trying to organize themselves, they are trying to, but the, the agents of, of the state, are, one way or the other, are trying to shut them down. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think um, it, it, we could go on and on, but time, 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 which has always been the, the, the pain of, of good discussions like this. But we keep on talking, and um, we hope the paradigm will shift at some point. I thank you very much, Mr. Olayemi, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Oduyebo. Thank you, Engineer. Abiola Taiwo. Yes, we, I thank you all for coming and stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you.